for coming and thank you for the invitation to speak. Um, this is a really fun talk for me to give. This is the third time I've spoken at these meetings and uh, this project basically came out of this meeting. Um, so every year coming here, giving us slides, updating, seeing what's changed since last year is, is a really kind of fun experience. So, um, so I'm just going to whip through some of the things which have happened in the past year for NF Core. It's been a, a busy year, so a lot, lot to talk about. Um, but for those of you not familiar with NF Core, it is a community effort. So we're basically trying to collect best practice analysis pipelines written in Nextflow. And we're trying to uh, also build kind of support tools around that uh, framework to, to make that standardized and, and easy to do as possible. Um, maybe it would have been better called NF Community because it's kind of very much a community effort and there's lots of focus on that. Um, so we, we give uh, best practice guidelines for writing analysis pipelines. We also build development tools to, to help with Nextflow pipeline generation. Uh, and we also provide ready to use pipelines, which you can then kind of just use out of the box as a user. So what's new uh, in the past year? Uh, community, so this is the, when I first gave this talk, which is in the first Nextflow meeting when we started uh, NF Core, and there was kind of basically three of us. So not very impressive stats. Uh, by the time I gave this talk last year, uh, we had grown significantly. Paolo had retweeted my first tweet from the NF Core account, and we got lots of uh, followers, even though we didn't really have anything to, to show yet. Um, and we had about 100, 100 or so uh, con contributors on the GitHub repos, both commits and issues. Uh, and we just started using Slack for communication. Um, now, those numbers keep just rising exponentially, really. Uh, so. It's really exciting to see so many people getting involved with this project, and it's really gone from strength to strength far more than I could have expected. Um, on the website, we ask that if people contribute to the project, that they kind of add their institute, and it's really exciting to see where people are using this. Uh, really, it's reached a global scope now. Last year, this was pretty much just Europe, but we're kind of reaching out more and more now, which is really nice to see. Uh, and if you look at the website traffic of where people are looking at the website, you can see where kind of really, basically wherever there's kind of sequencing machines and, and, and computational analysis work when people are looking at NF Core, which is nice to see. Um, one of the, so I, I've been a bit kind of having fun over the summer doing lots of statistics about NF Core, so there's, there's a few graphs, I apologize. <laughs> uh, I've been playing with the, the API from Slack, which is this instant messaging tool that we use, and pulling out the numbers of users that we have, and Slack categorizes users based on whether they've sent any messages in the last two weeks as inactive and, and, and active. So you can see our total number of Slack subscribers has kind of gone up very steadily. Um, but what I think is quite nice is that the number, number of active people really regularly using Slack is also going up with a bit of a dip over the summer. Um, and so this is kind of a pretty good reflection of the active community size, I think. Something I'm very proud of is how fast the community is to respond. This is our, how quick we are to look at issues which are created on any of the NF Core uh, repositories. And you can see that the first response on all the issues is nearly is mostly under an hour. So it's super, super rapid. Uh, and when we look at pull requests, it's the same. And, and you can see that nearly all the pull requests are being merged very quickly. Uh, and the more complicated ones take a day or a few days or longer. So it's a very active community. Uh, and we can now pull out uh, also the some statistics for uh, visitors to the GitHub pages over all repositories. And I started this in July. And the numbers are absolutely huge. We've had 8,500 unique IP addresses, uh, which is kind of amazing. And if you look at the Git clones, which is some indication of how many people are actually pulling the pipelines to run them, and again, nearly 3,000 different people running NF Core pipelines. This is probably inflated, because if people are using AWS with unique IP addresses, then they might count as lots of people. But either way, it's still a lot of people, and, and you can see there's a lot of activity. OK, so the pipelines. I had to update these slides about four times during the course of making these slides because they're being new ones being added all the time. But I think as of now, we have about 36 pipelines. Um, we have 15 which have had an initial release, so kind of considered stable. Uh, and hopefully, several, there's quite a few here which are just on the point of going over onto their first release. Um, so these are the, the stable released ones. Just to note a couple of developments on some of the more common ones. 
the RNA seq one, which is our first NF core pipeline, uh, uses STAR and, and our HiSat as their aligners. But uh, if you look at the dev branch, which will hopefully be merged any day, uh, there's been a lot of work by, by Olga and some of the others <coughs> in the crowd doing uh, adding in extra features, notably Salmon, uh, transcript quantification, RSEM, uh, and QualiMap for more um, QC measures. So this is um, Olga and, and Lorena, also Harshal and, and Alex. So uh, the RNA seq pipeline has gained a lot of features and a lot of nice little things as well. So look for a big release pretty soon. Uh, a new pipeline this year is RNA Fusion by Martin Fox, uh, uh, which is um, to do RNA fusion gene detection. Again, uses basically all the main tools. Uh, and along with this, he ended up developing a, a standalone separate tool to report on all the results, which gives really nice interactive reports of all the different RNA fusion genes, which it's found, which you can click through and see statistics. So. Um, two pipelines, ChipSeq has been around for a long time but was lacking a bit of love in the first release and, and AttackSeq. Uh, these two pipelines have been finished by Harshal and Crowd and uh, are really nice. We've got some lovely stats coming out of these things uh, with like AttackSeq peak shifts and, and kind of ChipSeq QC measures. Um, and because for these pipelines require a design file saying which samples are which, that also means that they can go on and do differential um, analysis. So it's a real complete analysis kind of through these pipelines. Um, in development, uh, special notes to Sarek. Um, Maxime's the main developer in the crowd. Hopefully going to be first release any day now. Uh, this is one of our most requested pipelines. Uh, it started off as a cancer analysis pipeline. Um, so it does tumor normal pairs, but it also does whole genome, just regular whole genome analysis and whole exome analysis. And uses a whole suite of variant callers and things. It's a very nice pipeline. So we're excited to get that, that ready for launch. I think that's going to get a lot of use. It was already getting a lot of use. Um, yeah, and so you can see there's this kind of germline step and then an optional side somatic analysis as well. Okay, I think that was my very rapid fire run through the pipelines. Uh, as well as the pipelines, I said that we work on tools, kind of developer tools and, and helper tools. So um, what's new here? Uh, one of the things that, that Sven and I have been working on, which came up last year uh, as a suggestion, is the idea of making it more standardized how, how our NF Core and NextFlow pipelines use parameters. So hopefully everyone's familiar with this, if you've been here for the last couple of days, that you can kind of pass arbitrary command line parameters in and they come through to the script as a variable. But at the moment you can kind of pass anything in and you kind of have to just read the documentation to know how, how to work that. So what we're trying to do now is create these um, JSON files um, which use a JSON schema to define exactly how the parameters look, uh, what they should be, and, um, and kind of describe them a little bit. And this is a kind of robot-friendly, but also hopefully human-friendly. They're quite easy to write these files by hand. Um, and these are all the different kind of attributes you can give them. And we can do lots of cool stuff with this. So if we say that a parameter is... Um, maybe required or not, and it, it, maybe in this case it's just one of several choices, then that means we can really validate the inputs. Uh, we can use this automation to, hopefully in Nextflow pipelines, we haven't done this yet, but it's coming soon, uh, but also to lint pipelines to make sure that there's documentation for all these parameters. We basically know that they all should be there, a bit more about them. We ho hope to also use this information as a single source of information so that we can also generate command line help we can potentially auto-generate markdown documentation and graphical user interfaces and things like this to try and make it easier for people to run pipelines. So this is kind of started, but and it's still in beta at the moment. Um, NF Core Tools, which is this Python package which we've developed, now has an NF Core Launch uh, command which uses these files. And um, so where pipelines have them, they'll uh, these files, you'll get really nice, rich descriptions of the different parameters, uh, showing you what the default value is and letting you interactively type these parameters in on the command line so that you don't really have to go away and spend ages reading all the documentation. Um, configuration files. So we lot, nearly everyone has to have a configuration profile or a con set of configurations so that the next row pipelines work on their system with their scheduler and everything. Um, and previously, uh, if you wanted to add your institute, you would add it to the, the main NF Core template. You would wait for that template to be released. Uh, then that would be synchronized out to all the different pipelines. Uh, you have to wait for all of those pull requests to be merged, and then you'd have to wait for each one of those pipelines to be merged. So it took a long time to add your institute in 
and for it to filter through to all the different pipelines. Um, so again, at last year's hackathon, I think it was, uh, we Tarshall started working on this as a, a, instead whether we could centralize this. So now we keep all institutional configuration profiles in, in their own repo. Uh, and instead, each NF core pipeline dynamically pulls the configs from that repo. So now, uh, if you want to add your institute, you add it to this one location. Uh, and straight away, every NF core pipeline can make use of that. And that's worked really well. We're really happy with this. Uh, oh yeah, and as a bonus, I don't think all the profiles use this yet, but this is kind of a fun little bit I added in. Uh, because we can look at the host name within Nextflow, uh, we've added a little feature where if you have a standardized host name on your cluster, so we have Upmax, uh, then it will look at that and, and check that it is what you think it is. And if you're not using the right um, config profile, it just throws a little warning, which is really good for new users. Okay, how am I doing? Oh, I've got loads of time. <laughs> um, so a few other kind of bits and pieces. Um, we've been working on the website, like I say, with all these kind of stats and stuff. Um, and we've one of the things that was kind of a thorn in our side whenever adding new pipelines was uh, generating new logos for them. <laughs> Sounds stupid, but uh, exactly, <laughs> almost. Uh, it was like getting the right font and everything. So now we've got a little web page where you can just type in your, your pipeline name and it gives you the, the, the logo straight away. Um, and yeah, the website's had quite a lot of updates. So um, now instead of kind of icons that we had to recognize to, in order to know how to join, we've got a simpler button with a page and a, a nicer interface to, to join Slack with just a single button to get an invite and, and various other stuff. So that's hopefully a bit more, again, easy for newcomers. Um, every pipeline now has its own web page as well, which is all done using the GitHub APIs. So when you fork a new uh, pipeline to NF Core, it, it automatically pulls all the information from GitHub and sets all of this up for you. So if you go to, um, to NF Core slash, slash RNA seek, then you get these pages. Uh, and it pulls in all the markdown, uh, the readme, as well as all the documentation. Uh, it gives you this nice kind of little profile, uh, tells you who's been working on it, how to run it, um, and also starts collecting loads of statistics about that pipeline over time. So if you hit the stats page, you can start to kind of look at um, how many people are using the pipeline and how, how many people have contributed to the pipeline. Uh, and then you get this nice little graph at the bottom of all the different contributors which I think is quite fun because you can hover over the graph or over the people and see uh, who's worked on it and when. So, yeah, a bit of fun. Cool. So, uh, what's next? Um, as we kind of come into this next year, I'm trying to think about what things I'm hopefully going to be presenting next year, if I'm invited. <laughs> uh, and uh, we've got quite a, quite a few things kind of in the, in the process of, of coming. Um, the big one that everyone's talking about for a while now is modules. I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more about this over the course of this meeting. Um, but the, the idea that Nextflow is going to have this new DSL uh, where we can start to modularize processes and, and kind of abstract the code into nice little tidy packages. Um, we think that there's enormous scope to make use of this in NF Core. Um, maybe probably through centralized repositories where we can share common processes between pipelines. Uh, and if nothing else, just to clean up the pipelines so that they're much easier to read and, and maintain, especially some of the bigger pipelines like RNA-seq uh, are getting to be quite large. So if we can abstract parts of that away to make it more isolated, that would be really helpful. So uh, Harshal's kind of started a modules repository and, and we all got a bit scared and haven't done very much with it yet. But <laughs> uh, if people have ideas of how they would like to see this work, we'd be really interested to hear them. Um, so. I'll talk about this a bit later in the tutorial, but um, at the moment we use a lot of automation, continuous integration with Travis and, and, and Docker. Um, and we're hoping that we can get rid of some of this with using new GitHub tools, which are just coming out, uh, the GitHub package registry and the GitHub actions, which is kind of automation alongside with um, repositories. Um, and this is quite nice because all of this comes in the repository and it's kind of all bundled together in one place. So there's no extra logins. Uh, the NF Core admins don't need to set anything up for you. So we've just 
got beta access to this a couple of weeks ago. Um, and Max has been playing around with it on the Sarek pipeline. And you can see now when you open the pull request, you can, you can go into the checks tab and you have this very nice interface where you can look through all the different tests which are running, uh, all the different lint tests, kind of group them um, and see everything kind of in the same GitHub interface, which is really nice to see. Uh, so I think we're probably going to go in this direction. Um, as well as the, the tests and the CI, GitHub's also launching a package registry, including Docker hosting. So this is a potential for replacing Doc Docker Hub, though the, the URLs are a bit longer. Um, and this is uncertain <laughs> at this point as to whether we, we want to use this or not. Uh, I got personal access to this yesterday, no, two days ago, and started playing with it for the first time. So we'll see. Again, it's I, I like to consolidate the services as much as possible towards GitHub, but whether it causes other usability issues, we'll see. But it's so an they are hosting also Docker images. No. They are hosting Docker images. Yeah. Yeah, and NPM and a few other things, but Docker is the interesting one for us. So this is the image for running the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah, so it's associated with the repo, so you go and view the repo, you can see the actions, you can see the tests, you can see the Docker images. We would use the actions to build the Docker images to host there, so like all the automation would be kind of associated with the repo. Um, something we've been talking about for a long time. So all of our NF Core pipelines run automated tests using very, very, very minimal test data sets. Um, so whether it's GitHub Actions or whether it's Travis or whether it's CircleCI, uh, all of these services have very limited resources available, typically about seven gigs of memory, uh, quite short timeouts. So you can't really run anything kind of real, but we do, but we do the best we can with the pipelines. So something that would be great is to run the pipelines with real data automatically to have kind of real, more realistic tests. Um, but of course that requires kind of some kind of infrastructure. So the two ideas we've got kind of playing with at the moment are uh, Jenkins and, and AWS. Uh, for those of you not familiar with Jenkins, it's kind of like Travis, but you run it on your own infrastructure. So it's an open source software solution. Uh, and I'm sure everyone knows what AWS is. Um, and so Martin uh, is a student in our, in our group. He set up Jenkins with, well, with, with help from quite a few other people. Um, and this isn't ideal because this is running on our server behind our firewall, so no one else can look at it. <laughs> but the cool thing is it has integration with GitHub, so it doesn't matter too much because our nice NF Core bot, the automation system, can run the tests on our server with the full data sets and then post uh, comments on the pull request with all the results uh, and whether it passed or failed or not. So this is one potential route, uh, or maybe what would be really nice is to run on AWS, which would be more open, more visible for everybody. And then we also know that the pipeline runs on AWS because sometimes there's some weirdness there. Uh, and also might be able to have um, example data sets that people could just download and see without having to run the pipeline themselves. So we'll see where that happens. Uh, just a little note for the, uh, for the, about the manuscript, which has been the focus of a lot of work over the past few months. Um, we have a preprint up now about NF Core, um, not about any specific pipelines, just about kind of NF Core of the community. And I was really hoping I'd be able to give you some news today about uh, about about the paper, but I haven't. I've been checking my inbox like every every ten minutes, but uh, we're we're just hoping to come out with a second round of reviews any day now. So fingers crossed. Hopefully, we'll we'll have this actually in press soon. Uh, and when it does come out, it's worth another read because we've basically completely rewritten the paper over the summer since this preprint, um, according to reviewer feedback. So I'm really excited to hopefully get this out soon. Um, okay. I ran through all that a bit quick, but uh, I kind of said that NF Core is a community, uh, and this, this slide's a bit out of date already, but there's many, many people involved in NF Core. It's definitely not a one-man show, far from it. Um, so I'd like to kind of say a huge thank you to everyone who's been involved and has helped to shape uh, the work that we've done. Uh, special mention to two little new NF Core members who've been keeping me busy over the summer. Um, very early adopters. <laughs> uh, if you're interested in joining in with NF Core, just finding out more, check out the website um, and, and head over to this new join page to find out all the different details about, about how we work and, and where to get in touch with us. Um, and if you're uh, able to come to the UK, to London, next year we've got a, a hackathon at the Francis Crick Institute in London, 
uh, which is being organized by Harshal. Uh, so there's going to be an expo training, very similar to here, there's going to be a, an expo training workshop followed by an NF core hackathon. So everybody's welcome um, and it'd be great to see, see some of you there hopefully. We might have another ha a hackathon in, uh, in Sweden, but it depends if and when I actually organize it. Um, yesterday I finished a new page on a website called Events, so you can also find it there. The, the details might be wrong. Did we fix the details yet? No. Okay. <laughs> Check it in a couple of days. <laughs> um, yeah, and with that, I'd like to wrap up. Um, my name is Phil, Phil Yours. Um, I work at Sidelife Lab in Sweden, and this is where you can find me. And the kind of the core admin team uh, who have done a lot of work with NF Core. Um, I think everyone apart from Johannes is, is here today. So, so uh, yeah, try and find us and ask us about NF Core. And that's that. Happy to take any questions. Centralize config. Yeah. Uh, just include config with then a URL. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we have um, the base, the URL base. Oh, sorry. The, the question was uh, with, with NF core configs, with centralized configs. Uh, how do we include them into uh, pipeline code? And we just used the, the next row feature called include config, which is normally you do with a file inside the repository, but you can use it with a URL and it works fine. Um, and we have the base of the URL in a parameter. So it's easy to change where the configs are located. That's important because if you're running offline, you need to be able to download the configs and then say where, where that repository is stored. Um, but it works well. We have an NF core download. Uh, function which pulls all of the pipeline code you're going to need. You can pull the singularity image at the same time and any day now, hopefully by the end of this week, it will pull all the configs and set them up with the correct config location as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is like naive or out of date, but um, I've seen Flowcraft as like an interesting way of getting some inspection of pipelines as they're running. Is that something that's still active? Is there any talk about including Flowcraft in NF core pipelines? So anyone from Flowcraft here? Got Diego. I don't, I don't know if that project's still it, uh, So it's a totally separate project, yeah. uh, and it has a slightly different design philosophy. Flowcraft is more about kind of building pipelines dynamically out of chunks, whereas NF Core is more about providing best practice pipelines, kind of as is, which you run uh, without without really changing too much. So um, there isn't any plans to integrate the projects, no. But there are, there are quite a few things in common with, between the two projects, certainly. Um, <laughs> yeah. For the Docker images, you, you said that uh, GitHub, are you building multi arc images or only one image that serves x 86? And would you, as a bonus question, would you benefit on compiling certain images for certain targets, like for certain processor types or something? Would it benefit the, the execution part? Um, so the question was, was do we have multiple dot images per, per pipeline? Was that the question? Or multiple okay. images per, per infrastructure. Now, if you if you have like just a plain image that's compiled for a generic x86, mm. or do you compile for R? I see. Or other yeah, no, it's just one generic image. Uh, we haven't really done anything clever uh, with optimization or anything. I don't know if it would make any difference uh, to to do that. Um, I don't know if anyone has tried that. Um, but no, we don't do anything clever. We have a basic base image. I can't remember. I think it might just be Ubuntu. Um, also, it's a fairly lightweight image. Um, yeah, and then we have an NF core base, and then each pipeline builds off that. Sort of a, a related question to that. Mm. Um, at the moment, the philosophy is to have one image for the one pipeline rather than one image for a process. Yeah. As we move towards modules, what, how's that going to change? <laughs> that's, that's the question I thought I was being asked. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an excellent question. Um, so. There's always been this discussion since uh, I first started using Nextflow back in the day, uh, whether to use one uh, container image per process, so you have an, an image which just has FastQC that just has star, or whether to have one image for the whole pipeline which has all of the software. For NF Core, till now we've gone down the route of having one container that has um, everything in it. Um, we like that, well, I like that because it's easy to maintain, in the tutorial later, we'll go through how it works. You kind of have Conda, which goes to Docker, which goes to Singularity. So there's just one kind of location, and it's very simple, based off Conda. Uh, also, if you're using Singularity, it means that there's just one file to move around per pipeline, 
and also the total file size is smaller because you're not duplicating the, the underlying OS every time. Um, and does sometimes cause problems if you have package incompatibilities and other kind of issues. With modules, then that's not going to work anymore because we're going to be sharing modules between pipelines and it's all going to become a lot more kind of free-flowing. So I don't think we have any choice. Then I think it will have to go to a single single uh, container per process. And one of the things we have been talking about doing is having uh, integration with um, bio containers, uh, which has which ties in with the Bioconda project and has already has prepackaged one container image per per Bioconda software tool. So then we wouldn't have to maintain the images or anything. And for the for the testing of the full um, data sets, how does that work in terms of like what output are you looking for? So you mean currently, or what would we like to go towards? Um, so currently, uh, it's fairly simplistic. We check whether the pipeline exits successfully, uh, and if we're doing a release or we're doing kind of a, a more thorough check of a pull request, then we, we we look at the logs at least. But we don't usually have access to the results files, so we don't currently do any testing of the actual result files themselves. Um, it would be nice to do that. <laughs> Uh, it gets a lot more complicated if you do that, but it would be it would give a lot more security in, in the results certainly, uh, and would be a bit of testing in a more true sense to be honest. Um, but it requires infrastructure and it requires kind of long term hosting of results and things like this, which we need to figure out how to manage all that. The, the main thing with all of this is it's quite different from having just doing it for one pipeline wouldn't be too bad, but when you have it for nearly forty pipelines and you need it to be set up automatically when people add in stuff, then everything has to be fully automated. So it kind of adds an extra layer of complexity onto that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>